So I'm going to click on connect to Neon database and GitHub or, or Google, but I'm just going to go ahead and continue with my Hasura account and Prima, and that's it. I still need to authorize Hasura to uh, create a project on my behalf and, and that's it. And if I go back to the console, I can see that the project was already I mean. created and uh, and active oh. and, and, and and active yeah. like uh, like come on like that's incredible <laughs>right welcome everybody to the show we are excited to have a very very special episode today that uh, we think will impact literally every single one of you watching today we're talking about databases but we've got big news that we're really excited about and to deliver this news i'm joined by uh, raful why don't you give us a quick show of who you are what you do and uh, also the correct pronunciation of your name and uh, we'll we'll get started from there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I get that a lot. Well, it's an Arabic name is Raouf, but written in French. We, that OU confuses everybody in the world, so no worries about it. Uh, well, I'm a, a developer advocate at Neon. I'm very excited to be here today, and thanks for having me. So, so Neon, like, um, if maybe if maybe people haven't actually seen the Twitters exploding with the news. Um, tell, tell us what Neon is and maybe we'll look at a little bit why it's actually such a special uh, episode here. Uh, yeah, and uh, actually it's an understatement uh, when you say the internet is, is exploding with Neon. We're, um, we're, we are not able to, we're still in technical preview um, and we're having new users uh, every day uh, coming in and joining the, 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 the platform. But let me start with what Neon is. So uh, in simple words, Neon is open source uh, serverless Postgres. Um, so it's open source um, because uh, our founders uh, come from the Postgres community, they're Postgres hackers, uh, and open source is in, is in our DNA. Um, I said serverless Postgres. So uh, it's Postgres that runs in the cloud. Um, and it's really built for developers to just, with a click of a button, get a connection string, focus on our application and don't worry about what's going on uh, in your infrastructure. So it's a managed, data, a managed database um, that is built on top of uh, uh, Postgres uh, and that is implemented in Rust. Like so Rust is that, just like popping up everywhere. Like, uh, so, I mean, it's, right. it's that low level, like really close, it's, just a step up from C, right? Because it's, it's just a, it's a compiles to binary uh, language that people are really, really going crazy for. And you guys were like, well, let's make a Postgres engine out of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating what's happening in the Rust community because you see this language um, that is increasing, um, I mean, in usage every year. So you have a community that is growing on a yearly basis and, um, it's amazing what people can do. Yeah, basically, it's a safer uh, C++. The, um, and I'm, I'm in no way a Rust expert, but um, I love what the community is doing uh, with, with the language out there. And and I'll toss this out here. The first person that that sends a stable diffusion image of a, com a combo cross between an elephant and a crab uh, to represent the Rust <laughs> and the Postgres coming together in very unholy matrimony, um, and, and sends that to me at Jesse at Hasura IO, I will send you swag. First person that sends me something that's that looks reasonably terrifying, uh, you'll get you get some free some free swag. But um, so uh, some questions immediately pop out of my mind. Serverless Postgres, obviously, that's going to have people questioning stuff. The closest thing people would probably relate this to would be something like, I guess, Aurora's Postgres, or or what would right. that be kind of, because that's a config, right? It's like a serverless config that then basically tells uh, AWS to spin up additional resources as needed. Like, where where do you guys differ? What's kind of the difference here? Because you're both sort of shipping the term serverless Postgres around a little bit. What does, what does Neon do here that's uh, special? 
Yeah, so um, I think you hit it right in that. Um, actually, we measure ourselves against uh, Aurora when it comes to performance. So we definitely want to be um, at least uh, as fast as Aurora, if not better. Um, there are actually some use cases where we are uh, better than Aurora, other use cases where maybe we're a little bit slower than Aurora. And we're, 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 we're working on that, but it's definitely our, uh, uh, our measuring state. Um, and what, what, Neon, what Neon does is, yeah, basically provides you with a Postgres uh, database in a matter of seconds. And the, the, the reason Neon is able to do that is because of the architecture. So we separated storage and compute. Um, and we have the compute node that is dissociated from the storage and storage that is also connected to S3. Um, uh, and with this uh, kind of capabilities, you are able to um, scale up and down and actually scale down to zero. Um, so if you're not using uh, your database for a few minutes, then uh, that database uh, get, uh, will be inactive um, and, will, and will technically not cost you any, uh, any money. Um, but yeah, so there are a lot of similarities with Aurora when it comes to, uh, I guess, when it comes to the uh, architecture itself. Um, uh, but what we're trying to do also is to focus on developer experience. Um, and I think that's where um, partnerships with uh, with some vendors that uh, like Sura come into play. Uh, and I think that's where we, we, that's one element of differentiation. But really, really, really try to focus on making the developer's uh, experience as pleasant as possible using Neon. And we'll talk about some of the features that uh, allow that. But some of them is um, some of them is, uh, uh, is uh, branching um, and uh, other cool features that uh, we're working on right now. Yeah, because like you're you're already I think hitting the nail on the head. So. It's, it's not difficult to compete against Amazon in terms of developer experience <laughs> and, and come out on top. In my opinion, um, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm more of a, more of a, uh, I like and to yet, push my button and get my resource. <laughs> um, right. And, and yet they're the biggest cloud provider. So the yeah, biggest cloud I, provider. I, ha and I have no fair. idea. Yeah. 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 That, right. That's fair. But like in terms of a, I just want to get a quick database instance to be able to start working with like. Uh, it really like Neon's infrastructure, and and when you're talking about getting an instant database, I mean it's it is really fast. And we're going to show we're going to show it here in a little bit, but like it's really fast. Like get the account, create a database, and it's a couple of seconds, and it's like it's provisioned, and um, that's a that's a really really impressive uh, technical functionality to to um, execute because like. We, I've used a lot of Postgres providers, and there's not one that I've had so far that's been that quick to get something running. So um, I think the focusing on the developer experience is definitely something that we can see where where Neon is going to have a lot of uh, quick wins against uh, some of the more entrenched uh, players. Um, one of the things I also liked when you were talking about, I mean, we'll, we're going to go into Branchable later because that's a whole thing. Um, but also, right. but, but hints again, uh, at, at a team of, of, uh, developers that think like modern engineers do people who aren't thinking about like, how do, how does enterprise provision hardware? Like it's more of a, how do developers like to build? And you're starting from right. that bottom up approach, which I think is really, really cool, but we're going to go into the branchable stuff later. Um, like so, when it when it comes to the way that you're trying to create this experience, um, one of the things I like that's that's differentiated here is that you don't uh, like a free tier of Postgres. A lot of times, you'll have to create a new instance to then be able to go into a, a paid tier. Like everybody kind of just gives you sort of a physical. Here's your burstable instance that will explode if you if you like exceed your limits, and and if you need to upgrade to a real database later, um, you'll need to do a migration when you're when you're looking at free tiers. Right. But Neon's path seems to be like 
I mean, because again, it's a technical preview, but like, here's your database, start free. And then as you need to scale it up, it's the same database. It's the same infrastructure because it's serverless. So you can literally just turn the dial and be able to add resources into the paid category instead of having to work with or worry about, you know, creating an entirely new um, on, on disk hard drive or database. Is that kind of a fair thing to say or? So, yeah, I think there are um, a few things uh, in, in what you said. So, um, yeah, so there are some vendors that prefer to have their, P, uh, the, their uh, free tier in a sandbox and just give uh, the developers, you know, the opportunity to test the, uh, the database without necessarily being able um, to, uh, uh, to use that same database for production later on if they, if they want to. Um, we, I, we are still in technical preview, so there are a few things that we need to, uh, to, to figure out uh, before uh, having a pay tier. Um, we, that we do not have. So there are intense debate inside the company when it comes to having a, free, a, a pay tier and, uh, and our pricing. So th there are uh, a lot of discussions about that and uh, we're, we'll be ready uh, in the coming months to, uh, to uh, disclose all of that. But, but the vision is to simplify it for developers, is to make it as easy as possible. So if someone uh, provisions a database with Neon, then the expectation would be that they can use it for um, um, for for their project, no matter the stage of their project. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So let, let's talk about the developer experience part, because I mean, again, technical preview. But the the developer experience part is particularly important for this conversation we're having, in that. It was actually why Hisura like was drawn to Neon because we, we actually just gave uh, Heroku the boot <laughs> out of our out of our free projects. So, so if you've uh, created any new projects within the last, I guess, about a week at this point, by the time that you're uh, watching this show, um, we were soft launching actually the day of this recording, uh, but by the time we go live. If you've created a new project since then, you're going to notice that the database connector is not Heroku anymore, which has already told everybody, hey, no more free tiers, uh, but Neon. We've uh, we've officially partnered with Neon to be able to provide Neon-based serverless Postgres inside of Hasura, just tapping into that, that ethos and that mentality of let's create great developer experiences. And, uh, and so far from what I've heard from the product team, it's been a, a great partnership because it's just really, really easy to integrate. Everybody's like, yeah, what is the best developer journey to get these two connected? And um, yeah, so Neon Database, there's now Neon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You just announced Yeah, you just announced it. So yeah, uh, we'll, 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 we'll go through the demo later on, but it's very simple to create a, uh, a Neon database uh, that runs with Hasura to provide instant uh, GraphQL API, which I think is awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited. Let's uh, let's let's do the demo now. Let's uh, let's show them kind of how it works, and then we can sort of use that as the talking point to kind of dig into this integration a bit more. And um, should I do? You want me to drive from my side, or do you want to drive from your side? Huh, uh, up to you. I, I had a demo already, but um, how do you want to do it? Well, we'll, 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 uh, we'll take your demo if you've got the one prepared. Kind of, kind of. Okay, prepared is a, is a, is a, big, is a big word. Uh, but let me, let me see what we can do here. Okay, so. Any kind of prepare typically beats uh, what I've got. So. <laughs> yeah, be, be, beats improv. <laughs> improv dev rel that's probably about the best <laughs> tagline that i've ever ever had yeah so <laughs> right so uh there are a few things that i want to do here okay so uh here here's what the, the neon console looks like and we have a button here to create a project um but and let me hide this here right so this is the neon console you have a, uh, a button here to create a project. You have also the possibility, we're gonna see it later, 
to connect uh, using the a psql command um, but let's go to hasura and i have created the uh, a project here and let me launch the project uh, I, I have this page open. So if you're new to Hasura, then you can see that um, it, that you have the onboarding experience. Well, this uh, is new too. This onboarding experience is brand new as well that, that got rolled out along with it. So yeah, this is this is the new onboarding pro, uh, screen here to kind of explain a little bit what's happening under the hood or what your what the design is supposed to be. So yeah, we got this screen as your welcome your new project screen. Yep. Yep. Uh, and you already can see that you can uh, connect to Neon from here, um, but I'm going to do it from uh, from a regular project. So for people who are already familiar with Hasura, not, not, are not necessarily new. So I'll go to the uh, data tab, create new database, and we are right here. So I'm going to click on connect Neon database, and and as you can see. Uh, I can connect with my Hasura account, so I don't need to create a new account, GitHub or, or Google, but I'm just going to go ahead and continue with my Hasura account. And prima and that's it, um, or almost. So I, I still need to authorize Hasura. Um, and I still need to authorize Hasura to uh, create a project on my behalf. And, and that's it. And if I go back to the console, I can see that the project was already created and uh, and active oh, and, and and active yeah. like uh, like come on like that's incredible <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty good um and uh, so i'm gonna go walk you through the operations in a second but you have uh, your connection screen here um I, one thing that i want to point out is that we don't keep your uh, password. So if you need your password, you can reset your password, but we, we don't store it. Um, so this is something that uh, you, you need to know about Neon, but this is what the what the console looks like. And I wanna take you to the operations page here. So when we hit that connect button, what happens is that a timeline was created, so a database was created, and that takes less than a second. And then the compute node started, started up and that, takes about uh, takes about three seconds. So this is how fast actually it was for us to, to deploy a database um, and connect it to Hasura. Um, I'm gonna continue with my project. So yeah, another thing that I wanna show. So this is a, this is the GitHub repo for one of the Hasura templates. So what I'm going to do is just to copy this um, SQL uh, code here and go back to my Neon console and I can go to my uh, SQL editor. And the only thing we're doing here is creating two tables, right? We're creating customer and order uh, tables. There you I go. think oh. you uh, truncated your uh, selection. Have I? The selection, the selection chopped off at the bottom. Ah, yeah, I see. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, so I can't do it like this. Okay, so I can do it in if the. You, uh, you can also I go to raw it. mode and just copy it there too. But yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me do that. Okay, so let me copy it. Ah, uh, huh. That's interesting. Okay. <sighs> Magic of pre-recording. Love it. Okay, let's do this again. Let me refresh this page. So remove that error. And have it right here, guys. Oh, is it truncated? Oh. It seems to be correct. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, this looks good. Um, and if I go to my tables, then I see my tables here. And I want to go back to Hasura. But like, this is so fast. <laughs> like, even inserts, like that's that's really really quick. This is this is pretty impressive stuff here. Um. Like I've been working with the free tiers of databases for a long time, and they do not give you the level of resources that Neon's giving you to execute these Postgres database queries and inserts. It's like, you know, waiting a few seconds for the stuff, and it's just like yeah. inserting like that. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, so 
yeah, I'm going to continue and view the database here. And I believe that it's going to ask me to track um, some stuff. Right. I'm going to go to the API. Um, is there anything else in particular you want me to do I except from just the regular query? I think probably need to uh, to uh, track your foreign keys too. So if you go back to the data okay. field or da data tab and you go to the uh, the track foreign keys, there's also a track all button there, the upper right corner um, to the right of it. Yeah. And that'll just create the magical bits of GraphQL that we love with the uh, relationships between the data. Awesome. And uh, then if you go to the API, you can actually drill down in the, in the relational nice. side. I can get orders and I can get uh, order date, discount price. Okay, let's, uh, let's run the query. There you go. So yeah, uh, that was uh, this. Th well, this is it for the, the first demo. We can, we can talk, we, we can do a little bit more. Um, but we have to talk a little bit about uh, other stuff. Well, I can I can just go ahead and yeah. actually start talking about it. So uh, we we teased the branching earlier, and I, I have I have to uh, confess something. So this UI is definitely going to change by the time um, the the uh, the uh, the console is going to be publicly available to everybody. So there are a lot of things that we're working on. Um, uh, this is just for the sake of, uh, of today's presentation and, and today's recording. Um, but we have the possibility of creating a branch. And once you do that, then the way we, it's, uh, it's uh, done now is that you see it as a, a project. It's going to be different uh, in the future. Uh, and let me go to... So this is, yeah, this is my branch. And let me go to the table, uh, to the SQL editor, sorry. And I'm just going to select everything from customer. And you can see that we have the same data. But the way this works is that your data from the, your first database is not copied to the, to the branch. So when you create a branch, the data is not copied, it's the same data. But we, we do what we call a, a copy on write, which means that every time you, you're going to add additional data, when those two branches are going to become two separate things, then we only, uh, we, we only save whatever difference there is between the two, uh, the, the two branches. Um, and this can open up a, a whole other topic, but we talked about it a little bit earlier. And I just wanted to 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 show this. So, yeah. So, so if I were to be if I were to be um, so copy on write means if I were to be attempting to delete data out of my branch, would it then essentially be copying the original data at that point to the to the branch and then have kind of its own set that I'm manipulating or when, when does it actually copy data? So it what would be a, what would be a flow? Yeah. Yeah. It does not. So it does not copy data, but if you have a write or a delete that, um, that is against data. past data, then, then you, then we're going to write it again. Um, so okay. that's what it means, but, uh, but whatever past data was is going to be safe and secure, um, and and is uh, is not going to be uh, is not going to be, I mean, altered. So if you so if you change, for example, you're doing a a, um, a migration, you're changing a string field to a JSON field for whatever reason, or you're doing that kind of a process. Um, and at some point you're needing to be destructive with a, with a schema. It's at that point that it would then create a copy of the data when it's trying to be able to create sort of a, a temporary column for storing the JSON values and then, or that, how, how would that flow work with, with branch data? So when does the data get, get actually copied? When you're doing destructive stuff to the schema or when you're doing destructive stuff to the data itself? That's actually a good question that I have to ask my uh, the, the engineers because uh, now you're bringing up a, a good point. Um, 
which how how do we handle for example uh, schema changes so if i alter my table and i add a different row uh sorry a different column then what's going to happen i need to ask that question to the engineers yeah. i don't have that answer but it's a good question um yeah, uh, so so the, but the basic idea, though, of the branching, which is what I really love, is that you have this ability to work in a way where you could say, hey, we're going to evolve this database and work on features. And that, that fits really well to the Hasura story, too, because we have this idea of metadata. We have the idea of local development that allows developers to be able to um, modify and make changes to the, the schema itself and then be able to ship those and merge them into the, the primary branch. So when you have that same functionality at the database layer, you really have a lot of power to be able to say, okay, this team is manipulating the schema and changing the schema as well as changing the Hasura metadata associated with that and are able to ship that as a complete feature that then can go through your typical CI CD pipeline to be able to get approved or rejected. And I think that's that's really, I think a lot of people have wanted to get there with databases, but it's only really kind of works in a serverless context because you need to have this ability to sort of spin up ephemeral versions without actually necessarily modifying or just duplicating your entire right. database. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, a, that's really cool. I think that's a very, very powerful uh, feature set. So yeah so one of uh, uh, one of the developers we spoke we spoke to uh, raised it as a paradigm shift. So we've always been taught that databases were for storing. but the way we see it at neon is it's more than that. It really becomes a developer productivity tool that is integrated to your CI CD. so tomorrow you have a, a team of developers they call they all can get a branch for their development environment. They can change their schema, they can add more data. And the same way uh, Git gave us the, all these powers to, to have all these versions of our code, we think that we can bring the same thing to the database world. Um, so I'll, I'll, ultimately, um, developers will have branches, we have their data branches, they're gonna work, uh, they're gonna work on those they will want to uh, delete them after uh, their, their pipeline is, uh, um, is, is, is complete. And also, you don't have to pay for all of those because you have scaling down to zero. So if you have a PR yeah, that explain, is... Explain that. Explain the scaling down to zero because it's also kind of an interesting angle that you have. Yeah. yeah um, l l let's see if we have it here. Let's see if I can actually show it. Uh, no, I can't show it right now, but I can show it in a few minutes. So basically scaling down to zero means that if you have a project that is inactive, then that compute node is just going to be suspended. And that, so there's no compute that is running. So you don't pay, you don't pay for it. It's as simple as that. The great thing is that you don't have, you, you don't consume resources you're not, uh, sorry, you don't pay for resources you're not consuming. There are also some disadvantages, which are, for instance, uh, cold starts. Uh, in the example I showed you, the compute node takes about three seconds to, uh, to, to get started. We're uh, working very hard to bring that number down. We think that uh, we can bring it down all the way to um, a few hundred milliseconds, which, we, we, which could be great. Um, but that's one of the, the, the drawbacks, but definitely the positive things is that if you have resources out there that you're not utilizing, then why would you pay for it? And, and um, you're, you're and talking about that... cold start issues, right? With, uh, with the compute or what are you referring to with, with the, um, the startup times that's a, that's the yes. serverless cold start paradigm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So yeah, your, your, your compute is not working. You have to uh, let that compute that, hey, we need these resources right now. So that startup time, yeah, it takes about three seconds right now. But, but I mean, in, in, in a lot of use cases, those three seconds are completely fine. So we were, when we were talking about developers in their developer environment, you know, having PRs uh, uh, and uh, you have a database, you have a branch for every PR, then actually it doesn't work against you.
Yeah, that's that's actually also a really like powerful thing. So you could have a lot of branches and not actually be paying for 50 <laughs> database instances with their with their own copies of production data. Um, yeah, and and what how how fast is a hibernate? Like when does it when does it actually oh. uh, scale down again? Or because I'm assuming if you've got a lot of load running, it's not gonna spin down or does it have any no. sort of a stay alive uh yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah if you have a of course if you have a, a stable activity if you have some activity in your database then that that compute node will never go down um and it takes about five minutes now of inactivity for yeah, your compute node to be suspended um and that's that was an arbitrary number um so this number might might change in the future um but yeah, it takes about five minutes now, right now. Yeah, that's uh, that's really interesting. You also talked a lot uh, talked about one of the other benefits of it being um, serverless is that essentially it's also bottomless storage. You can just say how big you want this database to be, right? Because you, I think you're saying something about it kind of gets offloaded. The data gets offloaded um, the older it gets into into block storage, or how does uh, why don't you explain a bit more about how that kind of works too? Yeah, so uh, we, we, I said that we separate, uh, Neon separates compute and, uh, and, and storage. Are you having coffee right now? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, I have to say it's 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great. Well, I've, I've, got, <laughs> I've got four kids, so like I can literally drink, I can literally drink this whole thing and, uh, I, and fall asleep on cue, so no problem. We're, we're in the same time zone. We were mentioning before earlier that we were really appreciating um, that, um, that uh, normally with this DevRel gig, right? One of us is is like staying up super late, and then the other person is either just waking up all ready to go, and we're trying to act like hyper, <laughs> keep <laughs> up with somebody who's just had eight hours of sleep. But uh, no, we're uh, we're both holding down the uh, European continental uh, yeah. time zone here. So um, no, yeah, I, I drink coffee basically basically twenty four seven. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my drug too. Uh, but n n nothing after 3 p.m. I paid the price in the past, so I don't want to go that that route. But um, yeah. sorry, I was I was talking about how Neon separates uh, compute and storage, and you were uh, asking about serverless. So yeah, uh, so the uh, and you were talking about bo bo uh, bottomless storage. Uh, I don't want to explain mm -hmm. this. Yeah, part. yeah, yeah. Uh, so so you have you have your compute nodes. Um, and, and, and currently we're, we're working on things like auto scaling with the compute nodes. Um, so th th these are features that are, will be available, uh, when, when, when it will be available very soon. Let me rephrase that. I don't want to, any problems with my product team. <laughs> uh, th th these yeah. are, these are features we're currently working on. Yeah. Um, this is the downside of of having Postgres hackers as being the the foundational team of the of the tech product because there's a lot of when when you're when you're digging around and you're and you're you're trying to figure stuff out and get things to work if you're if you've got a technically really strong team this is a problem that server faces all the time if you've got a really technical group of of engineers working on a product and they're kicking around something they're, they're something that's been status quo in a lot of cases, then all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know what? <laughs> we we could, and the, the oftentimes, you know, it's like a, a paradigm shift, which ends up being for the better, but it can be difficult sometimes when it comes to, to setting product features because there may be mm -hmm. a fundamental shift under underway with this thing they're about to release. So I can totally appreciate that, but yeah, we don't we don't make any promises on timelines or deadlines or anything for customers. No. If you want a deadline, yeah, you have to sign an enterprise uh, contract for that. Otherwise, <laughs> no, I, I think that's particularly yeah. oh, uh, that's particularly true for uh, for infrastructures. Um, what what I mean by that is you you have users' data. Um, that sits in your infrastructure, and you want to make sure that you're doing things right. So there's a lot of testing that is going uh, that uh, goes 
uh, under every um, uh, after every iteration and uh, uh, every uh, every every time something it gets shipped, uh, and that's what sometimes can slow things down. Uh, you're making sure you're 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 making sure that everything works as well as before, and you don't have regressions because uh, infrastructure is very important in your um, and and you're having uh, you you could have uh, critical data uh, stored. Um, so that's one part. Um, so we're yeah, working on that too. <laughs> we're, we're 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 working on we're working on uh, auto scaling. Um, it's something that we 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 expect to have in the near future. But with the bottom with the bottom uh, bottomless storage part, so our storage is connected to S three. So the we call it the cold data is offloaded to S three, and and that. For obvious reason, we want to make it uh, uh, cheaper for uh, for users to to, to have uh, to have a large uh, data set. Um, but it, it doesn't mean that um, it, the 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 storage is just S3. There are a lot of layers. Like if you go to our blogs and you read more about the architectures, then you see that we have page servers that actually communicate with those uh, um, with, with with S3, and they they store data themselves. Uh, but because of that architecture, then we can have as much data as um, as uh, as you need available to you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's actually also a really really helpful uh, angle on it too, because then you really have this ability to j just not worry about about the database which is going back to the developer experience right like something that the company is really focusing on and um yeah that's uh that's, i i really like you know that kind of thinking is there's a subset of people that are like we we don't want to worry about the devops we want to be able to pay for this service and that's what, we, what yes. you do you differentiate your business model on those turn on those matrices we don't <laughs> And so letting a team like that do that really works well. What are some of the other uh, functionalities that uh, that uh, we can do with uh, with Neon that that are cool? What else What else can we surface? So there are, there are definitely a few things that we are currently working on that I unfortunately I cannot talk about. Uh, but they're in the works that we'll be able to announce. And we'll be ready to announce in. Uh, I think in, in a few months, um, but the, one of the priorities that we uh, uh, that we have right now is to have uh, the, the database available in all regions, and and that is imminent. So it's going to be, uh, and I mean in all major regions. But we're having more regions right now. It's what I what I showed you is hosted in the U.S. Um, but there are pretty cool stuff that are coming. Uh, in the next few months, so st st stay tuned. But I, but I have to and, remind everybody: we're still in technical preview. Go to neon yeah. uh, dot tech, uh, register, and uh, we'll do our best to give you access. I'm gonna I'm gonna share my my screen here because I just gotta say, like, I love the branding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think this is super cool. So this is the neon.tech website um, for those that are, those that haven't come across it. Um, like that's a that's a really cool look. Like I, I gotta say that's um, that's pretty special. So if you uh, if you scroll down, obviously there's some some nice features here talking about kind of what's what's happening. You can see that there's a lot of people getting excited about it. People you've probably most likely heard of. Um, and then really just kind of talking about what uh, what it can do. So uh, we talked about uh, we talked about bottom and storage. We talked about data branching. We even talked about uh, demand on uh, scalability. I, I wanted to see if we could maybe try. This might be a this might be a throwaway part part of the of the demo. I wanted okay. to kind of speed run a, a use case. So you you said something about uh, that the that um, that Neon doesn't store the passwords. So if I right. wanted to add, if I wanted to add like this database to to Hasura, yes, can I just use this connection string, or do I need my my uh, password to be able to do that? I would just um, 
that's a good question. It's not something I would assume that you would need your password, um, but we can we can try it out. And so, how would I how would I typically do? I would just hit reset password and then be able to take it with me, or so mm -hmm. let's uh, let's try yeah. doing a speed run. We're gonna we're gonna that's try a worst. test here. Right, so, that's the worst case scenario. You're gonna hit the the reset password and you get the password, yeah, and you will get a new password and you'll be able to do it. But Oh, it's going to be interesting. So here's see. my here's my demos that I've got currently. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Hysteria. I'll make a new project here. We're going to, we're going to speed run this here. So I'll do a new project. I'll put it in the US just because if that's where my database is hosted. And Leading Lemming is just a fantastic project name. So uh, um, that's, that's good. We're going to go ahead and launch the console here and over to data. And I'm going to go ahead and call this my prod. Um, actually, I'm going to, go to uh, create a database. So connect to Neon Database here. Um, I've reached my free tier limit. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me uh, let me just uh, drop some of these here real quick. I'm going to um, settings, delete project. And we'll delete that one too. That's how that's how Heroku got my um, got my uh, credit card details. Uh, <laughs> get over the free product to have more, limit. <laughs> to have more projects. All right, so here. so we come back over here. I say try again, and uh, it's doing the connection here. I've already authenticated myself, so it's making a new one for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, there we've got it. Default database. Now, what I want to try doing is see if I can actually create a branch on that. So if I go over to the console, we've got Royal Bush. So if I make a branch, now I've got Royal Bush um, branch. branch here. Right. And so let's try and see if we can add this as a secondary database to, uh, to our databases here. So we go to Connect. I'm going to go ahead and call this um, staging to Postgres. We're going to use connection parameters or uh, database URL. URL. We'll see yeah. if this works or not. Um, so we'll, we'll try it. And uh, what I want to do is on the GraphQL customization, I'm going to namespace this with a stage. And prefix my uh, prefix my types as well with stage, so that my thinking is that I could then sort of have like a prod and a staging database sort of coexisting. Let's see if that connection string works. So it doesn't like the um... right. Yeah. So no so password. So we we'll go bo go back over password. to here. Yeah. I hit reset password on this. Um, okay. And that's not for that's just for this user on this path on this one right on this database not like my whole account so the well the alert is to tell you that if you're changing the password now then if you have applications uh that are connected to this database then you might want to change but that's passwords. the that's the branch though right but that, that's, yeah, this is the, just for the that's branch. the branch that's the branch okay yes so yeah. go ahead and say sure reset and uh, if you go to the dashboard, then you have a connection string with uh, with the password in it. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, there you go. So go back over to Hasura now. Console. Paste in the new connection string, which I'll be deleting that database. So you hacker kids, you're not going to get my database. And check that out. We've got the default and then a staging. So now if I were to, in theory, create a table on uh, here, then I think in theory, let's see what happens. <laughs> so, so we're really we're really kicking the tires today. Um, so, testing me on these limits, yeah. So we're going to go to the Sura data up here. Um, we're going to grab one of those. That was a good idea. I want to go ahead and grab one of our uh, connectors. So we're going to grab a data model and we're going to use, um, let's see here. Those are all full, those are complete databases. Do we have a simple e-commerce model here? Um, 
Oh, this one needs a lot more data. That's the super app. That's that one's not a small uh, <laughs> SQL statement. Um, let's go ahead and go to a simple. Where, where did you grab the uh, user and products thing? I grabbed it actually from the from the portal. There was a link to it, and uh, and there was a a link to the GitHub from the portal. I mean, from the project console uh, in. Uh, oh, okay. In Oh, okay. Uh, so right. It was yeah, the a... welcome to Azura. Right. Oh, nice. Okay. So we just copy or we can that. actually, yeah. Or if you can, yep. if you click on install template, then it works too. Very, very cool. So we go now to the, uh, the default here. Go to public. We're going to go to the um, SQL statement here. So we're on default now. If I go ahead and I run this. I'm curious if the branching will actually pick up uh, if it'll if it won't pick it up because it's I've added tables to to a uh, the the master. Let's see what happens. All right, so we've got the public, we got the customer and the order. So this is the the default staging one. If I look at uh, if I look at the staging one, do we actually get? Um, no. Yeah, so we don't, right? Because so branching's. Yeah. Branching is working the way that we would expect, right. um, which is cool. So if we made another branch, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and drop this branch here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just um, go to staging here. Yeah, we're gonna remove the staging DB. There it is, staging. Go back to neon. We're gonna delete uh, this this one here. So. Um, I do you have two, then you can keep it. Uh, and you can just go to the, uh, oh, you have demo too. So yeah, you'll have to delete one. So I go to stat, uh, databases here. Um, so how how do I go through deleting the uh, the branch that I want to get rid of? This oh, one you here. underneath your settings? Yeah. Oh, so it's, a, it's a project. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so, it's a project. So we'll delete it. And now I'm going to go back to here. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new branch from this existing one. And we're going to reset the password on that branch, which gives me now a connection string to be able to connect with. So we'll just snag that. We'll head up to our, um, our manage here. So we'll say connect to database. Um, we'll call this one the staging database URL is this. I'm going to prefix everything here with the GraphQL field customizations. We're going to call this the prefix again is stage. And the type names will also be stage. And uh, let's go ahead and try connecting that. And so from there, we'll need to track the uh, what it found. So we can track these. We'll see if um, we'll see if it works. It did. So it, uh, and, yeah, so and you have the same data. track. Oh, yeah. And now that's a really cool way that we're able to sort of set, uh, set a thing. So what you can do, you know, underneath permissions is you could actually come in here and under staging, we could actually create like a dev role for like JWTs where we would say that the permission is only for developers. Mm. For this, uh, for these tables, and that the users are anonymous users that get routed to um, our default table, for example. So that's a that's a really powerful uh, way to work to be able to kind of include both of these databases into the same. Because uh, now, if we go to the API, what we would end up getting is something kind of like um, so. There's the stage orders, and then we would have like our regular orders, right? Right. So you could you could totally have both of those, and then if we wanted to uh, make a special rule here, where let's go to the permissions for that data. I'm going to go into um, order table. Say permissions. We'll say this is a uh, well. This is this is staging. So we'll say uh, dev has uh, has select without any checks. And then on this one here for orders, we're going to put permissions on that. We're going to say that this is um, 
user, they have select without any checks. I don't know if I actually toggled the columns um, on the other one, so I might need to do that. So I go back down to here now. And this is all, you know, you can all, all define this in metadata too. So if we go back down here to the dev role for select, let's turn on all the columns there. So it's kind of kind of fun then as we can come back up to our, our API developer experience. And I could say that I have, uh, you know, the turning on this access or a role here of um, user, we can see that they don't actually have access to the stage order. If I were to uh, do something like dev, it would be the inverse hmm. where my, my devs uh, have access to stage order, but they don't have access to order. This is what it's telling me is that it can't see it. Wow. So you could totally set up permissions for your branches and say, okay, I have these like a staging environment that's being branched off of emerged into that all of my dev workflow is going into. Um, and like, like that's a, that's a pretty, pretty cool that's, way to work. <laughs> that's a pretty cool. Yeah. That's definitely a pretty cool use case um, that, that you have there. And it, this is what it's for, right? It's, to uh, allow maybe different teams in your organization to have access to the same data and um, or to a, a branch of that data and they can do whatever they want uh, with it without necessarily um, using your own data. Um, and this is pretty cool. I didn't know that we could do that with Hasura. So um, I'm learning today. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, and, uh, and we, uh, I knew that this was theoretically possible, but we, we actually just tried this live. This wasn't actually rehearsed. So um, I'm glad yeah. we don't have to delete that this part is, out. So <laughs> this is pure improv, I gotta say. <laughs> improv dev yeah, yeah. Right. Um, well, yeah, so I think uh, at this point, it's actually really up to you as a, as a community group to kind of figure out what you're gonna do next with this combo. We've got super fast databases. We've got really, uh, flexible API layers. And um, is there anything else that you'd want to leave the the viewers with to check out about Neon or? Well, yeah, so what, what we want uh, developers to do out there is to test Neon and let us know what they think. Um, as I said, uh, we are uh, unrolling about 100 people a day. I know it's not a lot. Uh, we'll drop that invite gate at, uh, at some point. But what we really want to do is understand what developers want and how we can help to provide them with a database that can help them, uh, you know, uh, collaborate and, uh, and, and deliver great apps. Um, so please let us know what you think. Uh, my, uh, my Twitter handle, Rauf Devrel, uh, feel free to uh, DM me or, uh, or, or uh, reach out to me on Twitter. I'll be very happy to, uh, to, to help. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, so, so you heard it here. The, the fastest way to get through that wait list is to set up an account with Asura and uh, <laughs> use the integration. It is true. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this show. I think we're, we're super excited about what this, uh, you know, combination and this partnership was going to bring. We're really, we're really happy so far with just how fast we're able to get people started with these um, template databases or, or just, you know, these new databases. Uh, serverless Postgres, it's a thing. People should look into it more. Uh, if you really like Rust, if you really like developing and hacking on Postgres, I think uh, I think you guys are hiring, right? Uh, yes, we are. So if you go, yeah, if you go to uh, neon.tech uh, slash careers, you, you'll find all the positions we are hiring for. Um, we'll be very happy to have your applications. Yeah, so push Neon to the next the next level and uh, get those get those all those deadlines that uh, Ralph promised uh, during the show today. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is gonna be fun tomorrow. Going back to the office. Well, my yeah, yeah. office. This is this is the office, but it's it's gonna be the interesting office. to talk to people yeah, yeah. right after yeah, this yeah. Uh, video airs. Yeah. All right. Well, have a great day, everybody. Again, thanks for joining this show and we will see you around and catch you for the next one. Have a good day.